Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to tell you about the developmental activities within ScanCell. I just draw your attention to our disclaimer notice. So ScanCell, we're an immuno-oncology company, and as you all know, immuno-oncology market is very rapidly growing, primarily due to the success of the checkpoint inhibitors. However, the checkpoint inhibitors are only applicable to a minority of cancer patients. So the hunt's on now to find optimal co uh, combination therapies that can address the unmet need in cancer. And this is where ScanCell's technology platforms, both Immunibody, Moditope, and Avidimab come into play. So the company has four lead products in development. We have a phase two clinical trial ongoing, and we are planning a phase one, two clinical study towards the latter half of this year, and we're targeting multiple cancer indications. The company was founded by Professor Lindy Durrant. Our headquarters are in Oxford, 23 employees, and we're listed on the AIM exchange. And we have a number of partnerships, uh, which I'll talk about as we step through this presentation. So what's driving the immuno-oncology market from a developmental and commercial standpoint is obviously innovation. And it's a question of then translating that innovation to meaningful clinical data. And it's clinical data that can address unmet needs uh, that the checkpoint inhibitors can't address, but also the incremental benefit above standard of care therapies. So really the four criteria that we're trying to demonstrate with our technologies is to address these unmet needs provide an increase in durable response, there would, uh, obviously a clean toxicity profile, and obviously not putting too much burden on the overall cost of therapy when we're looking at combinations. So if you look at the diagram on the, uh, on the, uh, on the right here, so we can see that this is the purple line. This obviously represents a substantial commercial market. And what we're trying to do now is to really in, uh, enhance the bar increase the bar and this is obviously representing a significant market opportunity in its own right. So this is our pipeline. So we have three technology platforms. Our lead immunibody product is SCIB1. It's completed a phase one, two clinical study in malignant melanoma. Uh, as I mentioned, a initiated phase two trial in combination with the checkpoint inhibitor. And then SCIB2 is in collaboration with CRUK, again targeting solid tumors, and CRUK will take that product into a clinical study, again in combination with the checkpoint inhibitor. Our lead Moditope program, Modi1, going into multiple cancer indications, targeting uh, entry into the clinic at the latter half of this year. Modi2 following close behind. And then we have a collaboration with a company that uh, listed on NASDAQ last year, a very successful NASDAQ listing, BioNTech. We have a collaboration with them to identify the T cell receptors for our Modi1 vaccine. And so this obviously looking at adoptive T cell therapy through that collaboration. And then we have a range of antibodies targeting tumor associated glycans, which I'll talk about. So let me just focus now on our cancer vaccine platforms. So as you saw from the pipeline that ScanCell is a cancer research company. So we have a number of different modalities in terms of how we approach cancer. But we have two can, uh, platform technologies that are focused on the stimulation of T cells. And as you may know that uh, cancer vaccines have had a uh, lackluster um, uh, success in the clinic in previous um, technologies. And what ScanCell has done is to come up with methodologies to address these shortcomings, to invoke high avidity T cell responses. And we do that through two ways two ways. One is with immunibody where we have a dual mode of action that in, uh, induces potent CD8 T cell responses. In the case of Moditope, this is a whole new class of cancer vaccine. And here we're exploiting the difference in the metabolism in a cancer cell versus a normal cell. And we're targeting stress-induced post-translational modifications. And our preclinical and preclinical uh, data points to that our products have the potential for safe to, safety um, profile, uh, excellent safety uh, profile, potential to address these unmet needs in the hard to treat cancers, and to provide an increase in durable response by invoking immunological memory, and also potentially low cost of goods when compared to other modalities. So we have the potential here of hitting all the boxes and ticking all the boxes for a commercially relevant product. So just a closer look at our immunibody platform. This is a DNA plasmid. And that DNA plasmid transfects the cells at the site of injection, both muscle cells and the antigen-presenting cells. And it transcribes to an antibody-like molecule. 
And in the variable region of that antibody-like molecule, we have integrated T-cell epitopes. And because of the nature of that molecule, we get two modes of action in terms of how those T-cell epitopes are processed by antigen-presenting cells. And that's both through direct presentation and cross-presentation. And it's those dual mode of action that induces potent CD8 T-cell responses. And, and we've been able to demonstrate this in our first clinical study, which I'll talk about, which is SCIB1 in melanoma. In this case, we've integrated T-cell epitopes for GP100 and TRP2 melanoma-associated antigens. That product is delivered using electroporation. And then in our SCIB2 program, which is in collaboration with CRUK, we're targeting NYESO1. And in that particular uh, program, we have actually evaluated uh, successfully preclinically a nanovesicle delivery technology platform uh, as opposed to electroporation. And that will be the method of uh, delivery for that product. So this is the clinical data for SCIB1. We treated two cohorts of patients, patients who had metastatic disease. So this is monotherapy data. And as you can see from the, um, on the left and the right hand side of the slide, sorry, you can see that we have um, resolution of lung metastasis. And then in a cohort of patients who had resected disease, uh, this is a swimmer plot. So each of those uh, horizontal lines represents a patient. Um, and you can see the red dots represent the number of surgeries and resections that these patients had prior to treatment with SCIB1. And as you can see from the uh, 10 patients there in the green um, uh, horizontal lines that we were able to prevent the recurrence of disease as a monotherapy in those patients for a period of five years. And then we had four patients who had recurrence who were also um, disease free uh, at the end of that five year period. So this is well above the historical norms uh, in this late stage patient population. So we turned our attention then to that metastatic setting again to see if there was an incremental benefit we could see by combining SCIB1 with a checkpoint inhibitor. And this preclinical model here, you can see that um, in the case of both the anti-PD-1 and SCIB1, we see similar survival curves uh, for those products as monotherapies. However, if we combine the two as represented by the orange line, we see a significant incremental benefit in these two products. So we see the synergistic mode of action, if you like, where the SCIB1 is putting the accelerator on the immune system and obviously the checkpoint inhibitor removing that immunosuppressive um, effect. And so our objective now with our phase two clinical study is to translate that great preclinical data to clinical data. And this is the study that we uh, initiated last year, phase two clinical study looking at SCIB1 and combined with a checkpoint inhibitor. Yesterday we announced that we now have an open IND for this study, so we'll be again targeting to initiate clinical centers in the US as well as uh, expand our clinical centers here in the UK. We're targeting 25 patients, so it's an open label study, single arm, where we're looking to um, um, look at the improved response rate to Keytruda from 30% to around 55% in this combination. And we anticipate that we'll see um, the interim data from this study towards the end of this year going into early 21, subject to the patient recruitment rate into the study. So now I'll just focus on uh, Moditope. And as I mentioned, Moditope is a whole new class of cancer vaccine. So in this case, we're exploiting the metabolism within cancer cells. So cancer cells being stress cells, hypoxic, nutrient deprived, and they invoke this process of autophagy for survival. Autophagy being the auto recycling of proteins. And what happens as these proteins get broken down? There's that you get a translation of natural amino acids to unnatural amino acids. So we'll see the conversion of arginine to citrulline and also uh, lysine to homocitrulline. And the invented step that ScanCell took was to identify and characterize these peptide fragments and to uh, recognize that these can be invoked to be expressed on MHC class 2 to stimulate potent CD4 T cell responses. And in this case, what we have been able to demonstrate is that these are cytos cytotoxic CD4 T cells. So this is a very unusual immune response. And our first product in the Moditope platform is Modi1. 
And 1D1 consists of three of these citrullated peptides derived from, two, two of these peptides are derived from vermentin, so they're containing epitopes, citrullated epitopes from the vermentin protein. Vermentin being upregulated in cancers, um, implicated in uh, EMT, that's epithelial mesenchymal transition or metastasis, and then also enolase a glycolytic enzyme. And we conjugate each of these peptides with an adjuvant. We got this adjuvant from uh, isopharmaceutical called Amplivant, and that boosts the immune response to these peptides by 10 to 100 fold. And we can see from the uh, diagram at the bottom in this animal model that we've been able to demonstrate that just immunization with individual uh, peptides, either vermentin or enolase, we get very good survival rates of around 80 to 90 percent. However, by combining these, as demonstrated in the blue line, we get 100 percent survival. And we've repeated this in other animal models, um, pancreatic, lung, ovarian. We've re-challenged the surviving mice with uh, tumor, and again, we've seen excellent survival. Um, so our objective now is to take Modi one through to the clinic and to look at uh, these hard to treat cancers. So both vermentin and enolase are upregulated in a, in a wide range of cancers, and particularly those cancers that are unresponsive to immune checkpoint inhibitors. So our objective now is to take this uh, product through to um, demonstrate a clinical response in four indications. And three of those indications will be as monotherapy, and in the case of head and neck cancer, we'll be looking at a combination. So this is not one clinical study. This is uh, powered to be four clinical st uh, studies in parallel. So each of these cohorts are powered for clinical response independent of each other. And uh, obviously, by uh, looking at a broad range of indications, we're de-risking um, the clinical development of this program by um, potentially not missing any clinical signal. And uh, you know, obviously, our objective is to demonstrate um, success in each of those indications. And that clinical study will be um, initiated in the latter half of this year. It'll be a UK study. Uh, and again, we'll expect to see interim data as we step into 2021. So now I'll just uh, talk about our monoclonal antibody platform. Um, this is uh, targeting um, glyc glycosylation. So these are tumor-associated glycans. And as you may know, that uh, glycosylation is uh, implicated in the malignant phenotype of cancer. And because uh, glycosylation is a post-translational modification, they adorn both proteins and lipids. So we see glycoproteins and glycolipids. And the same antibody can target both. No, regardless of whether the glycan is um, exhibited on the protein or on the lipid. And that actually translates to a broad range of applicability in terms of how we can utilize these uh, monoclonal antibodies, both as um, anti antibody drug conjugates, because so they internalize, they've been able to demonstrate direct cell killing properties by inducing immunogenic cell death, and also um, in bispecifics and CAR-T. So we have uh, currently um, got three collaboration agreements to evaluate these tech, uh, antibodies in a variety of these different modalities and to look at their capability in each of these um, therapeutic modalities. We also have a technology platform that enhances the avidity of these antibodies, not just the anti-glycan antibodies that ScanCell has, but this technology can be applied to any monoclonal antibody. And it does this by enhancing the uh, non-covalent interaction between the FC region of antibodies to enhance the overall avidity and enhance that antibody's mode of action. And we've applied this to our antibodies, our tumor-associated antibodies, to improve the overall cell-killing capacity of those products. Um, just a quick overview of the, um, uh, uh, the panel of antibodies that we have available. And of course, as I mentioned, We've got several um, collaboration agreements currently evaluating these in each of these different areas, and we anticipate that that will translate to transactions of this um, product portfolio as we step through the remainder of this year. So highlights for, two, uh, for last year um, have been primarily operational to drive our products towards the clinic and to um, um, enhance our um, clinical uh, development expertise through our CAB, uh, and also to bring in new investment into the company with um, uh, Vulpa's investment um, management who now have 17% of the company 
and the appointment of Martin Diggle. So this is a specialty healthcare fund. Um, those of you who don't know Vulpers, they're also the largest investment in Oxford Biomedica. Uh, and we're very pleased to have them on board because uh, they have a reputation, obviously, of following their money and being long-term shareholders. So news flow going forward be primarily driven by um, our clinical development programs and then translation of our existing collaborations with our monoclonal antibodies in terms of transacting those assets as we step through 2020. So in summary, the focus of ScanCell going forward is to generate clinical data, so we'll see clinical readouts from our two lead programs, SCIB1 and MODI1, over the next 18 months. Uh, to extend our pipeline, and broad, broaden the utility of our platform technologies, to enhance our uh, and de-risk our platform, our, our, our development programs through term technology partnerships, clinical partnerships with our clinical advisory board and also um, uh, CRUK and patient advocacy groups to ensure that we are um, meeting unmet medical needs and then of course industry partnerships with those companies who have heavy investments in the immuno-oncology space and looking to expand on their franchise. Thank you. <laughs>